public comment in just a moment, John, and you can start. Let me just see if there's anyone else here um, for public comments. I think that's all the numbers covered. Uh, unless I've called your name or you've, you've spoken up, is there anyone else uh, here on the line? Okay. All right, someone else just joined us. Ralph? Hey, this is Hadley. All right, Hadley. The name doesn't, the number only shows half. How are you doing, Hadley? Good, how are you? Good, and Hadley's from the Valley Reporter, if uh, people don't know. We also had Mad River uh, TV setting up here as well. All right, uh, John Gallagher, open, uh, you've got uh, four minutes, if you will, for public comment. Go ahead. Oh, wow, four minutes, okay. No, 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 four minutes. Four minutes. Are you, is it time now? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, okay. Uh, this is John Gallagher from Wartown. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to speak this opinion. And I'm speaking about math learning. That's what I understand it is about. And I am something that I have researched extensively. I'm uh, semi-retired. And uh, I was really concerned when they closed the schools. And I said, oh, boy, this, this, is, this is something serious. And I'm convinced that wearing masks is not effective at all in affecting any benefit to the transmission of a virus, either to the wearer or to anyone in the vicinity. Uh, the effectiveness of a mask as a protect, protective measure has been studied very, very extensively since doctors and dentists began wearing these masks a hundred years ago. Uh, I've seen no data from any study that supports mask wearing against bacterial or viral infection or transmission to others. Uh, there's one study that just concluded in 2016 that took about 20 years. It was done by an association of the dentist, and they concluded that wearing a mask for a dentist or a doctor is useful only for blood or other bodily fluids being splattered to the face of a doctor or a dentist. John, where, so, uh, uh, it John, where, what uh, publication was that published in? I don't have my computer open right now, but I could, I could, uh, I can find this thing. Yeah, I'd want to know uh, when it was published, who it was published, who the, uh, who the thought leaders are. Uh, this, this one study that was concluded in 2016 probably was a consolidation of many studies. And, and it's not a study if it's a comp compilation of many studies, but go ahead. Okay, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to find this thing. I can find it. I, I, I didn't think I was going to have to provide this because... Uh, anyways, I can't. Well, you know, I, if I you... believe in that mandatory grass wearing is, is immoral, ineffective, a violation of the Constitution and of a person's own control over their own body. Uh, let's see here. I haven't worn a mask at all, but I can see that more and more places are. are uh, like you you supposed to go to shots and not wear a mask and thank you on the twenty first now you're gonna have to wear a mask. Some auto park stores do, some don't. Uh, it seems to be um Is there some oral health Pardon me? Is there some oral health group? I I'm still trying to find it. Uh I did a Google search and there is something from them from 2020. Just about my question. Basically stating many medical face masks are also designed to be fluid resistant. The splash and splatter of blood and other bodily fluids masks are not necessarily designed to feel tightly to the face, therefore air means the way to but that's the problem because, you know, a virus, a bacteria is maybe one to five microns. And a virus is like uh, 150 to 150 nanometers. And no mask, not even the N95, cloth, cotton, none of them will do, are effective against that at all. It's, it's, like, it's just a screen that gives nothing to them at all. So it's totally ineffective. Uh, it can't work, and 
it, and it, like you said, it cannot seal around your face. So it's, it's just basically the New England Journal of Medicine said it's a symbolic gesture that looks sort of like you're trying, you're doing something, make someone feel good, you know. Uh, and it also restricts your your uh, your intake of oxygen. In the two-hour operation, a doctor wearing an N95 mask has his blood oxygen level decreased by 20 percent. And there's many different studies showing on the internet where people have using or are using oxygen sensing meters that are uh, in factories that are calibrated once a month. They're used every single day, and you know, OSHA has, you can go to the OSHA website, and they'll tell you that all these masks are totally ineffective against the virus. But anyway, these masks uh, will, uh, you know, you don't, you rebreathe your own CO2. And 19.5% oxygen is the minimum that OSHA says is, is a healthy environment. And so these companies have to check this all the time. And if you, if you put a, I've seen studies where they take this probe and they put it on your cheek, and it'll be 21, 21 and a half percent oxygen. And then they put a mask on, and they just stand there and breathe for three seconds. And all of a sudden, the beeper come on. It's 17.4 percent oxygen. Now that you're breathing in this mask, you're re 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 breathing what your body is expelling. It doesn't want. So I haven't found it yet, but I'm still looking. I it, sure, that's okay. Um, we need to. Is there any other um, scientific evidence? Well, another, one more thing. I, sure. One more thing I wanted to say is that uh, I, I believe that this this mask wearing is the first step in the agenda for forced vaccination. And I personally have never had a flu shot, and uh, I, I'm totally against vaccination. Uh, that's John. That this is not the uh, this is not the, the forum for uh, vaccinations. So, so vaccines are poison. I don't know if you people know this, but there's a Childhood Vaccination Safety Act of 1986 that was basically Congress passed this because the pharmaceutical industry was getting so they were getting sued so much. Yeah. All right. So, is there any other uh, public comment? Well, this is Bill Zekas, and hey, Bill. I would respectfully say that I do support uh, an ordinance that would require mask wearing. Uh, I'm not sure specific to what you're considering, but I do feel that they might be effective, and I don't have any issue with being safe rather than sorry. All right, Bill. Thank you. Um, is there any other one on the line, Neil? I see uh, you've joined us, Neil Nestlong. Do you have anything for uh, public comment, Neil? Uh, um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I called in a little bit late there. I apologize. I just basically, um, I just wanted to get on, and uh, I did send you guys that email uh, right uh, before the last meeting, and uh, if you guys had a, a chance to look at it, any, any questions about the, um, about the, uh, the withdrawal? Yeah, I think we're going to uh, put that on our next uh, agenda, uh, Neil, to discuss, if that's all right. Sure. And so it'll be, uh, it'll be an agenda item so we can um, so make sure there's, if people want to uh, participate in that, they, they can. That would be perfect. Yep, we'll uh, allow some time for you. We'll put you on the, uh, the agenda for that. Thanks so much, Tom. Appreciate it. All right. Anything else, Neil? Uh, no, that's it. All right. Um, so that looks like we're finishing up, unless there's anyone here for public comment, and it doesn't appear to be. Um, no one else has joined the line, so we will um, continue on the agenda. We first have um, the Harwood uh, folks here, we have Ray and Mandy, and then we'll go to the Recreation Committee, and then we'll at 6.45-ish, um, depending on how the agenda goes, we'll get back to the face covering ordinance discussion. Whew. All right. Um, so, thank you, Ray and Mandy. How are you folks tonight? Wonderful. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. 
nice to see you guys. Thanks for, for taking the time to come out. Um, you certainly could have called in, but it's nice to see you and uh, appreciate you, you coming. Um, as you've seen, um, there's not a lot different or that we're looking at as far as the MOU, but um, just want some feedback from you, what you guys are thinking, uh, maybe what your thoughts are, and, and, uh, and then I know John's on the line, he wants to discuss the, the, the parking lot project a little bit and, and that stuff that's going on, so um, what, what are you guys thinking? Well, I mean, we haven't really had a chance to, to talk about it at all. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, it doesn't look like anything's substantially different. Um, I, I certainly don't have an issue with moving moving forward to it and recommending the, the board sign this. So, you? One, one of the things that we talked about in the last meeting, Ray and Mandy, is, is doing a little less um, mowing in the back in the fields. Uh, we had some recommendations from the rec committee um, as far as even wildlife, but even saving a little bit of um, time and energy and money uh, as, as well. Uh, we've talked to the neighbors um, that would be impacted down by the church, and they were happy with it as long as we put in some paths. It wasn't all grown up. It's not going to be the – most of it will be open like it is now. It's mostly the, the hill and up above and then down right behind the church area there. So I don't know if you guys had any objections at all to that. The only um, thoughts was uh, around little wildlife, like rodent wildlife in the tracks, and um, how that would impact the school. But I'm not an expert on that. So um, how close are we talk about getting to the school? When you say behind the church. Yeah, I think Ray and I are, are going to go and block it ourselves. Um, and if you guys would like, one of you would like to join us, maybe when we do that, because we've had that recommendation, but we haven't been out there very well, just so we can get an idea of, because we want to make sure it's not up against which the, church? The, um, the Catholic Church. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one way over there, or this, yeah. this side. Yeah, yeah not the, uh, the Methodist side. Yeah. Is that, that's way enough, I think, far yeah. enough away. Far, far yeah. You shouldn't have any, there really shouldn't be much difference there. I don't think most people won't notice it, but. Um, and the other request that I've had from some folks in town, and you may have talked to them directly, is, is the, the pickleball people. And they were looking for a place in the winter. I don't know if they were able to ever work that out with you. Or... I worked that with Susan, um, and um, we kind of came to the decision that it was uh, a compromise, I would say, and we worked it out, and they used it, and they were fine. But obviously, everything ceased, you know, oh, as, absolutely. as of March fifteenth. So, um, so they weren't using it anymore. But yeah, we have, we drew up an agreement. They kept to their side, yeah. I kept to mine, and it seemed to work out fine. Perfect. So as long as I just want to make sure that they have to, they're able to uh, speak with you. And yeah, we we spoke back and forth a few times, and we're able to definitely work. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, anyone else have any comments with the, the school? All right, well, hearing none, I guess, yeah. So you guys would recommend this again, um, go for another year and, you know, things come up. I have is um, that um, drainage pipe that has to be replaced. Um, the one that leads down next to St. Patrick's, that was pretty pretty crushed and everything. As far as I know, they're going to replace that when they do the um, catch basin there. Um, is that right, Ray? Uh, as far as I know, John, on Saturday, they replaced that culvert um, and that's the, I think that's the extent of the work for, for this work that's going on now. I think uh, okay. when, whenever the final design is done again for the parking lot, I'm sure the pipe will go to where we have ended this pipe. 
a new pipe will be replacing what's there up to where we left off. We've got the culvert now beyond the sidewalk, so the sidewalk would not, not have to be dug again. All right, so yeah, so I guess okay. that's nothing's going to affect you or us. I can just hear part of that, but I, I take it it's, it's not going to be an extra expense. Not an extra expense, right? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thumbs up all around there, John. No. No, it gets done in the, in, with the parking lot of work. It still needs to be replaced. It gets done in a different phase. Is that what you were saying, Ray? That's what I'm saying, that when, when the parking lot is constructed, then new, new structures in that whole area you know, around the school would be installed and the pipe, the discharge pipe would be brought over to where we have left off. Right, right. Right, the plan right now is not to do that work. Right, that was not in the scope of right. work at this point. So, all right, yeah, so it looks like, again, things are fairly uh, just the same as going. So, what's the, the timing for the work? Uh, as we move along here, we, we get into the, later in August, we're going to start having cars filling up that parking lot. Yeah. He's asking about uh, timeline done. So our, our plan is to try to be out of here uh, the first week in August. Okay. Our yeah. uh, pipe will still be in town, but I, I think they don't have anything in, in the parking lot that I know of. So the parking lot will be effectively... Yeah, it'll be empty. cleaned up, graded okay. off, ready Good. for ready for school. All right. Well, school be ready for it, right, Mandy? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> They were just asking about uh, the parking lot and, and timing, and Ray said uh, Du Bois will be out by uh, the beginning of August. So the, the parking lot will be ready for, um, for parking at that point. All right, so we will go ahead um, and sign off on the, the, demo, the MOU between the Moortown uh, School District and the town of Moortown. Uh, we'll just need to change some dates on it, and uh, we'll pass it on to um, the school board and uh, let them take a look at it if you guys recommend it and then we'll one, there. one more item is the, the a design study for the parking lot. Yep. Because that's an expense that I believe is, is agreed upon to be split. Okay. And do you know what that is, John, and when that will be? Uh, okay, I'm just trying to Pull that up uh, right now. Um, we have that in a separate agreement with the um, uh, I believe I I believe we're uh, this is uh, our share um, in the neighborhood of nineteen thousand. Are you in what in what agreement was that under that we had that with them, John? It was a separate agreement that we had. Okay, so this this is the for the stormwater management plan, and what's that? I've got it right here. That Ray, Ray, I believe, did you take part in that meeting? Ray um, Stagel. <laughs> Fairly certain. He's pretty certain he was there, but. Ray said okay. that he, he was a separate Yes, he was. But he's, he's under the um, um, thought that it's under a separate separate agreement, John. And I think it is. It's under that the whole parking lot agreement that we have. Okay, fine. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's not, it's not hard enough. But the MOU is more of a maintenance, maintenance type of agreement. I know that the, the MOU addresses both short and long term. So I just wanted to just clarify that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Well, very good. We'll go ahead and send this off um, to the school board and go from there. And if there's any other questions or things come up, concerns you guys have, or things that you want to uh, talk about or discuss, you know, reach out anytime. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot this off to Michelle Baker in the morning. Okay. And um, 
you know, we'll just, we have a standing meeting uh, Tuesday morning, so we'll talk about it. And if there's any issues that she flags, I'll let you know right away. But I don't believe there's going to be any issues. Thanks. We appreciate this. Okay. Yep. Thank Thank you. Just like Thank you. I did just notice on this agreement, uh, under, it has a long term maintenance freeze in there, a paragraph. And it does say uh, possible funding sources by September 2017. So that, that should probably be updated. Yeah, that's why I think I said we had some dates to change oh, in there. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. yeah. It's, it's under the term, it dissolves in 2017. You may want to fix that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, there are a number of those dates that were a little yeah. uh, yeah, Those are those things get, that get overlooked. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all of a sudden you uh, send a bill out and then it's not there. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, and there are some amendments uh, and things to it um, down below, so as we've noticed. So. Very good. We appreciate working with you guys. Yeah. Um, and look forward to continuing that relationship. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Thank yeah, you. We'll see you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Now, is there anyone on the line um, with the Recreation Committee project? I know I think John Atkinson um, is going to join us. I'm not sure if he's joining via telephone conference or login uh, or um, coming. Uh, Bill, do you know? So is there anyone on the line that can speak towards the, the rec committee? John, are you hearing us all right? I'm hearing you, yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure that we're not... Uh, I didn't hear those folks uh, in the back of the room, but I, I can hear you guys. When you say anybody on the line, you mean from the rec committee? That's correct, that's correct John. He may have, uh, he may have forgot. Well, what time are they? They're supposed to be on at 6.30? It says uh, 6.30 on the agenda. Hello? Yeah, no. Yeah, so we got a couple of minutes. Um, did anyone get a chance? to attend the, um, the bridge meeting today? Uh, yes, I do. Don Wexford here. Yeah. All right, Don, why don't you give us, uh, uh, and we got the bridge closure coming up at 7.15, but while we're waiting a couple of minutes for John, why don't you give us a, uh, a little history of what happened there? Okay, um, the bridge is gonna close 17 at 7 a.m. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, and they're going to start doing, mobilizing, doing things around the site on 8 1. They're closing on 8 17. They're going to work seven days a week. They're going to try to avoid working at night. They know they have a sound, uh, a decibel thing because the work, you know, the folks live right there. So working at night, they have to abide by certain sound ordinances or whatever. Uh, and so they have 61 days and they supposedly be opening the bridge, bridge on 1016. They um, handed out a, what I think was also uh, shown at the meeting that we had at the town hall last summer, I believe. They had a printout of the, the clothes, you know, the signage that was going to be going up. Um, Let's see, uh, there was some talk there was from some of the folks who was the Mad Rock was there, Water, Waterbury Fire Department was there, and a couple other people from the state. Um, they spoke to um, making sure that we had the, the weight limit posted on the road, you know, because of the talk of big trucks coming. That was one of the things I asked him in the detour was it's going to be trying to tell people out on Route 2 that, you know, people were going to still come down and how they were going to keep the 18-wheelers and the big, huge fuel trucks. 
think about how they would like to change their flashboard signage that they're going to have up. Um, because inevitably, they're going to come down and the turnaround there is going to be very difficult because the road's going to be blocked off just about at the driveway of, I think those folks are the Murphys who live there, in the Blue House, in the Old Mill. Yeah, Murphy. You guys with me? Yeah, you're correct, Murphy. So, you know, there was just, what's that? I'm sorry, you were correct, go ahead. Yeah, so there was some just general discussion between the contractor and the state engineer and, and the Murphys about how, you know, what would happen, you know, how they will access their, their road and how they get their trash out. But more, they, there was a then a discussion if a big truck does come down there, you know, the whole turnaround problem is going to be, you know, with trying to turn around into Pony Farm Road or, and that's what brought the discussion out about how the maybe alert truck, people with trailers, you know, like campers, they, you know, people, what typically happens is people see a road close sign and then they don't believe it, they drive down it anyway, you know, or a bridge close. Then they get there and it's like, oh, it's closed. So they're going to go back thinking about that and, um, They talked about the sheriff's department was there. They said they heard from Wakefield, but they haven't heard from Moortown about some increased patrolling. Um, you know, they moved municipal grants for that, as we talked about for the sheriff and they did draft the signage. It didn't sound like the contractor would put any signage up on Tony Farm Road. They're not going to really put up any signage because they don't want it to be look like it's a detour, which, you know, that's. Probably makes sense, I don't know. And um, the paving is supposed to be done 831, because it's the same office and the same engineers that are overseeing the paving project. And that was it. All right. Well, we'll, Any questions? Well, we'll, we'll hold, our, hold your questions until we get back to that. Uh, John Atkinson has uh, arrived. And so we're going to get back yeah. on, on agenda, but we will have um, time at 7.15 to ask any questions to Don or any suggestions that we have uh, as far as that goes. So uh, thank you, John, for coming. No problem, thank you. Um, we have the other board members on the line, uh, John, Callie, and, and Don, and um, one of your, your colleagues or someone that, that is, um, I think, is with you, uh, Bill Zekas? Yes. Is so on the line as well? He's on the phone too, yeah. yeah. To support you um, or not, I don't know yet. We'll see. But, uh, anyways, uh, what do you have for us? Well, uh, I, I'm here with an update on the, on the yep. project. And yep. uh, so, um, in terms of permitting, uh, we are all set on our zoning permits. Um, the project does not require any new ones, which was a determination by the, the zoning uh, uh, administrator. Um, we are still waiting for our archaeological permits. Um, the, the archaeologist that we hired has had some medical challenges in his family, so it's taken a little bit longer than we would hope. Um, but that is imminently in, uh, expected. So hopefully within the next week we'll have that. Um, we have uh, decided on a contractor. Uh, Sinuosity is a trail building company that is built all over Vermont, um, including here in the Metro Valley. So they've worked on several of our What was it again? The name is Sinuosity. Yeah. Um, and uh, they are expecting to start in uh, the middle of August and finish in the middle of September. Um, and uh, let's see, what are the details? Um, we've done a bunch of site visits and, uh, and are looking forward to starting. Um, I realize that there's some traffic issues that we need to work through. Uh, do, um, who should we approach in order to be able to access the school? Yeah. John, excuse Yes, John. I can't hear a word. All right. Let me, uh, let me try to... Let me try something. Can you hear me now, John? Yes, I can. Very good. Okay. Um, I'll start over. Uh, 
So um, we have uh, secured our, our zoning permits. The zoning administrator said we did not need any, so we're, we're, we're good to go on that uh, front. Um, we are waiting for our archaeological uh, report to come through. Um, we hired a, an archaeologist to, to uh, um, do a report that the, the state requires for any uh, publicly funded projects. Um, and he has had some medical issues in his family. So it's taken a little longer than we had uh, hoped, but we, uh, we expect that to be um, in our hands pretty soon. Um, that would be the final permit uh, determination that we, we need to uh, get before we can start the project. The grant has been fully executed by the state, which is, means that we basically can start to spend the money. Um, and we have chosen a contractor, Sinuosity. They're based out of Morrisville, Vermont, and have worked uh, all over Vermont, uh, including here in the Madera Valley before. Um, and uh, we're gonna be working closely with the, with the Recreation Committee and, and the Madera Riders and the contractor to uh, make sure the project is done uh, really well. And let's see, did I forget anything that I had talked about? Before? Oh, the starting time, we're hoping to start in mid-August and finish in mid-September. Uh, there are traffic issues, we realize, with the school parking lot and, uh, and, and work going on in town and uh, overlap with any, any school traffic that might start in late August. So uh, we're looking for uh, folks that we should contact to, uh, to plan that. And uh, if anybody can let us know, that would be, that would be great. John, I thought we have you coordinate with Sasha. Um, and Sasha can work with the school uh, on that as well, so everyone uh, is kept informed. But as long as John and his group is aware of that now, I think everyone should be able to work around it. Okay, great. Uh, we do have spaces reserved for the, the town office. You may see some signs there, so, um, but there are more spaces and we can certainly uh, work together with you guys. But bear in mind, the school does take a lot of uh, spaces. Yeah, we're, we're not expecting to, to take up a bunch of space and certainly don't want to you know impede any any uh things that are going on at, at that time so if we have to schedule our work around school or, or any of the the construction stuff we're we're planning on that okay. uh john you had a question on uh, insurance yeah i uh, certainly uh john um you know the, the board is in favor of it um but uh, we have had some insurance questions and one which came from DLCC wondering why we, the town, is not listed as requiring a specific insurance and uh, others uh, are. Um, so I think um, prior to uh, any ink drying on contracts or anything, we certainly would need uh, uh, the attorneys of DLCC to take a look at it. Um, we would love to share it with you uh, and, and certainly don't want to sign anything that uh, will, will challenge uh, either insurance or, or building or, or any of the, the uh, various factors that we have going on here. Um, we certainly um, are happy to provide a certificate of insurance to the, to the town. Um, if there are any specific requirements in there, uh, you, if you would let us know, otherwise we can send you the general one that we, that we send to everybody. Okay, uh, that would be good. Okay. okay. And should I send that to Sasha also? Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, yes, that would be great. That, that's an easily, uh, easily uh, fixed issue. Okay, perfect. Are there any other questions for John? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. So unless anyone has any questions, uh, John's going to get out on his bike and uh, go home. <laughs> I drove down. I feel bad. <laughs> you drove down. Come on. It's hot. It's hot. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you, John. All right. I'm going to grab a drink of water here. All right. So can you guys hear okay now? All right, so we're going we're to go ahead and move on um, to the face covering ordinance discussion um, pertaining COVID-19. So 
John, would you like to um, to start the discussion now? Bear in mind tonight we heard our first guest, uh, John Gallagher, came in and uh, shared some information with us. Um, so when you're making your your decisions, uh, be sure and remember we have guests uh, with opinions. So John, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've looked over, I've um, uh, discussed this with uh, Warren Blackwater, which you now has one, and uh, Payson, I believe, who's adopted one. And uh, I've looked over the Warren one, and I think that looks pretty good. And I feel strongly that we should uh, adopt the resolution very, very similar to that one. Um, John Gallagher did call me on Friday, and uh, uh, voiced his uh, concerns and opposition and so on. Um, but, uh, and, and I will say that um, I, I haven't been up, well, my treasure hasn't been out much, but um, I was out to the Moortown General Store and um, the other day and noticed uh, that, um, well, it took me up my, anyway, <laughs> I noticed that um, it, it looked like they're doing a better job of it there. Um, so I, I think just something, the, the warm one is really cut and dry, it's pretty easy. It, it's not, you know, it's not demand, demanding, it's not talking about penalties or, or, or anything like that. Um, you know, I mean, I, I just think, uh, I, I think it's a good one, I think it makes sense. Kelly, what, what do you think, Kelly? So how are we going to enforce that? I, I don't. I don't think it really has to be enforced. I mean, just a sign on the door should be enough for most people. Sure, people will still ignore it, and there there will maybe some that, you know, for one reason or another, because of medical conditions, can't wear a mask. Um, but um, you know, bottom line is just one step further, rather than being kind of voluntary, okay, it, it's, you know, mandatory. I mean, the postal requirement is, and Warren just has post signage at the entrance. Another approach is location uh, that people are required to wear face Don Wexler, what, what, do you, what do you think? And if you, what's going to happen? I'm not done. All right, Kelly, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Kelly. I don't think that. No, so go ahead. No one's trying to. We're looking for an order with this that people cannot, I mean, we're not enforcing it. You can't question people on why they're wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. And right. we're looking at this falling onto minimum wage employees who have a lot going on as a thing. I mean, I think what we, what it should be up to is a business's decision with what they want to do with their business. I mean, as a town, we can say you come into the town office, you wear a mask, you come into the library, you wear a mask, which I'm pretty sure we're already doing. So, but I think it should be a business's decision with what they do with their business. And if somebody, you know, for whatever reason, doesn't want to feel by people for whether they're wearing one or not is, you know, just to leave it, leave it up to them if they want to do it or not. Well, I don't think we're, it's not my intention or our intention to demand that the Moortown store employees wear masks. What I would, would, would do and would expect them to do, what I'd ask them to, to post a sign outside their business um, that the town of Moortown uh, has a mandatory mask ordinance uh, and, and leave it at that. I, I drive, around, drive around a lot of places and, and it's, it's very common to see now and 99% of the people have a mask on and as you've commented and, and other, John has, there are people who have medical conditions that, that can't wear them. Um, but based on the CDC recommendations, um, just really everything we're hearing in the news 
today, and, and I know we can't swallow everything that the news tells us, um, but it, it sounds like this is something that can uh, help uh, prevent the spread of the virus. Um, and I think that's most important, is our health and everyone's health. Um, you know, I, I'm not one, you know, I think you all know me pretty well to, to that big government should be telling people what to do. Um, but this is unprecedented times, and these are, are things that um, really need to be done for, for your, your fellow um, citizens, if not for you. Um, and if you do read some of the literature, it's, it's not, you wearing a mask is not pre preventing you from getting it. No, it's preventing perhaps you spreading uh, germs to someone else. Um, and we all travel and we don't know what we're picking up. So I'm certainly in favor of, uh, of an ordinance. And again, I don't think it's gonna be something that we're going to be uh, standing around enforcing. But I think it's something, if you ask people to do it, um, more will do it, and I, and I think it can only help us. Um, Ray, what's your thought? <clears throat> For my, my thought is, uh, I don't, personally, I probably wear a mask whenever I'm in public, uh, or, you know, as much as I can. Uh, well, I'm having trouble hearing Ray. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I'll pull my mask down. <laughs> uh, from my own personal standpoint, I generally wear a mask when I go into a public place or within the six foot separation. I do not think a mandatory uh, requirement from the town is necessary at this time. I'm very concerned about uh, how this will be interpreted or who's going to enforce it. Are we going to have citizens in more town? Um, questioning other people coming into town and asking them why they don't have a mask on, who's, you know, uh, are we going to have arguments and conflicts over this? I mean, there, as we know, people can't, not everybody can wear a mask. Um, I'm just, I'm just concerned about how this is going to be enforced and, and read by in the public. I, I would feel if, if the state if the state has a mandatory requirement then I would I would feel better about that. I don't I don't just don't feel the town at this time needs to have a mandatory requirement. That's my feelings. Sure. Any any questions um, concerns for Ray? Ray, I agree with you. I think that's, that's my sticking point with this. I mean, I'm required to wear a mask for work. It's terrible. I would need some home with a splitting headache and go to bed right after. But I think it's an enforcement piece. And if, you know, everyone else in the community, people get into, into arguments one way or another, it, it doesn't. With it not being able to be enforced in a way that people would really follow it and having, you know, the main piece, then it's, it's hard. I think I agree it's going to be some complex. Don, what's your thought? Okay. Um, we have, what, five? We have four holders on. Bike Express Post Office. And um, as far as, I mean, that's the road, road compost, but I mean, it's not the public. You want to go in to drop your compost off and get the company off. So you can't really count them. So those are those the businesses. And of course, we have the school, and we're not sure what the whole school program is going to be, but um, whether children will be required to wear a mask or the teachers and that's it's still a, a work in progress I would think. Um, I don't know if I really like the word ordinance. I mean maybe some kind of resolution. Exactly, that's my point. Yeah. Maybe some 
kind of statement that the board supports um, the wearing of a mask because it's in the public interest and in your town people interest and, um, and so, you know, for the good of your neighbors um, and, and that the, a lot of the stores, I think John or Tom, you both, someone mentioned, I mean, most of the places I go to sit out a sign and actually wear a mask. You know, uh, so that is going on. So I would be in favor of some kind of language, uh, you know, like I said, a resolution. From what I understand, there's 14 towns now in Vermont that have come up with a resolution slash ordinance or ordinance slash resolution. And um, so, yeah, that, I think it would be, uh, it would be a short, short sign for support of people who are really trying, not that everybody's not trying, but, you know, realize the importance of it, and it would show our support for how important it is. That's what I think. So, so how would that sound, Don? How would, it, how would we write that out? Yeah, exactly. Like resolution? Exactly. Well, if you read theirs, it's, there's, I mean, that's more than a resolution. It's, it's now, therefore, be it resolved that the select board issues the following COVID-19 emergency order. A, requirement to wear face coverings. <laughs> so that's, that's more than, um, you know, a recommendation or a, um, um, yeah. you know, so that's a little, Maybe a little strong to what Don was 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 thinking, and um, Ray, do you something? I agree with you, Don. Uh, the uh, the language is too strong. I I, I believe that Don <clears throat> a resolution stating that we support uh, wearing a mask is better than a mandate saying. You must wear a mask. Uh, some sort of resolution stating that we support it as a select board, I can agree on. But I don't agree with a mandate or an executive order. So, um, so the, listen to this. The Vermont Department of Health recommends that all Vermonters wear cloth face coverings when outside the home to help spread the COVID-19. So why don't we... Um, recommend. Um, I think we can use that wording there, um, and we support or we. Where are you right now? I, I, I think it's um, second line, isn't it? It's on the second line, where it's it says, uh, "Where is the remark? The public." Health recommends that all Vermonters wear cloth face coverings when outside the home. I think all we need to do is support that statement, right? I agree. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it's it's not mandatory, but um, maybe the the, the uh, North Town Select Board. Um, advises you know, um, supports the recommendation uh, held by the Vermont Department of Health. Yep. Something along that line. Don, would that cover you and John?
Stronger than a recommendation is a requirement, John. Sign on some of our establishments that are going to say, um, going to have to tell people they have to wear a mask coming in, you know, into a store, the post office, or the or the Bike Express, or which I think they have to sign up already. And Overshawn's got to sign. You know, um, so we're really just talking about the Morton store, or. No, I, mean, I, I think that establishment, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just pointing that out, that the work on store is going to get more out of state than the other establishment. Yeah, well, the other establishment seem to have a sign of masks on that they're, they're uh, you know, having people for two. Mm -hmm. When you go to Overshaw, Overshaw has a sign that they have a mask on, on that store. segment that are just not going to do it and we could put up signs from here to interstate and it, and they're not going to follow it you know that's just the way it is well, you know and, and I don't I just don't see how how much more we could do I mean it, you know the, the message is clear it's out there people know they, they you know they should be wearing masks whether they believe it or not and I don't think any, there's nothing we can do yeah. to convince them any more than that. Ray, I, I think you make some good points. I mean, there's, when you go out now, there's either people that would be the wear masks or don't. Yeah. I mean, there's really not a question of deciding to do it anymore. You, either you have a, a glove, car, glove compartment full of masks or you're just not going to do it. Yeah. Um, I really do see the scientific evidence behind it. It's, it's better, it's good. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, as I'm listening to everyone, and I just don't know what, what good an ordinance or is going to do um, one way or another. I mean, I, I don't know. And, but we do have, you know, people in the community that are vulnerable to the disease, you know, the virus. Yeah. Uh, high risk people. Um, so yeah, I don't know. How do you how do you appeal to that? I mean, it's the patriotic thing to do. You tell them that, um, but but posting a, a sign at the store that says it's mandatory. Uh, the John Gallows of the world are not going to pay any attention to that. Well, that being said, so can we just do it as a, as a, uh, not a resolution or a support wearing masks in town or something? I don't know. Is it, is it, is it, is it all, is it, is it all or nothing kind of thing? Well, I mean, I think, I think if you use words like mask order as opposed to mask mandate, 
You have that just left, it, it's stronger. Um, and I mean, that's some of the language that, that's used in the wine one. Um, you know, and or, or, or policy. I, I would just like to see our town take a stand on it to some degree. So call it a, a, a mass wearing policy. Something like that. It would just be good to have something strong. So, John, are you saying replacing the word must with should? Yeah. Yeah, it should there. Even following the recommendation of the um, Vermont Health Department, the select board recommends that all Vermonters wear cloth face coverings. member public entering a business located in the town of Moortown. Um, anything that's open to public is shown so, so forth should wear a face cover. Well, I mean, you can even say it's now therefore be it resolved that the select board issues to file COVID-19 policy. You know, it's not an order, it's a policy. Or mask wearing policy. COVID 19 mask wearing policy. COVID 19 mask wearing policy following the recommendations of the Vermont Health Department. Any member of the public entering a business located in the town of Moortown that will be open to the public or a town owned building should wear a face covering over their mouth and nose that is consistent. With the Vermont Department of Health guidance. Exactly. John, I mean, I think that's. It sounds correct. Uh, you know. I, I like that better than what I'm looking at. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like that better. I like to. I think I need to see it in writing officially, but I, I, I think I could support that based on what it sounds like. Yeah, could you could you read it again, please? So, Tasha, did you write that down as I said that? <laughs> Some of it. Probably. John, John said that. Yeah, no, I got that done. I'm just trying to remember what we said here. Um, COVID-19 mask wearing policy. Following recommendations of the Vermont Department of Health recommends that all Vermonters wear... Yeah, he's not really good at um, <laughs> the, What was the first part? Start the first part of COVID-19 mask wearing policy? Uh, the COVID-19 
mask wearing policy of the uh, Moortown Select Board is that we follow the recommendation of the Vermont Health Department um, and any member of the public entering a business located in the town of Moortown that will be open to the public or a town and building should wear a face covering over their mouth and nose that is consistent with the Vermont Department of Health guidance. And it's in B to require to say should. Should. Right. Does that, Don, work for you? Yeah, I think that would work. Sure. Callie, what do you think? Yeah. So, are we adding things about parts or not? Yeah, it would be um, everything that I said plus B on, B, uh, and everything after B as well. But, uh, and as we get down where it says require a face mask, we would uh, replace that with should. We don't even have to. It's an order. We're not ordering them to do it, but it is an order. <laughs> okay. But I don't think we have to. I mean, I think it works. Go ahead, Kelly. I think if we're looking at outside areas, and the people are outside, we know that the people are outside maintaining a six foot distance, the transmission risk is very low. So if they're outside, soccer on the field keeping a distance, then I mean I wouldn't recommend people. No, and, and that's not that's not no it says that. It, it says that one B. It says that one B is that. So yeah, I think that's taken care of Callie in one B. It's it's where you can't make um, social distancing guidelines is when you again should wear a mask. Not that you have to, but again, um, but if they're out playing um, their sports or doing whatever, whatever that, I'm sure that there's enough guidelines in their sports and such that um, we don't need to get into that. Well, I think I'd like to get this um, taken care of. So, um, no, no. I, I think the wording again, it, it, it'll be now for, let me just um, be it resolved that the select board issues the following COVID 19 policy. Um, COVID 19 uh, face mask uh, covering policy. Starting July, uh, 15th or J July 25th, any member of the public entering a business located in the town of Moortown that will be open to the public or town and building should wear a face covering over their mouth and nose, consistent with the Vermont Department of Health guidance on face coverings. It'll it'll sound. It might be a little bit different. We might have uh, following uh, the Vermont. Department of Health guidelines, the uh, Moortown uh, face covering policy is, and then it will be just what I just read. Yeah. yeah I, I think that that would be that's a good opening line following the Vermont Department of Health recommendation that all Vermonters wear face coverings when outside the home for COVID 19. I think that's a good opening line, and then you go on to be it resolved and so on. Yeah. All right. So that. Oh, so we're not going to do all. We're not, not going to do all these other sections of what Warren has. We're going to do the 
the one we recommended all the morning prayer, and then it goes jump into what you just read from, right? Um, I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll even, yeah, we can start out with whereas consistent with the governor's stay home. I don't think there's anything in there that's, again, uh, that is forcing anything on anyone. Um, and then, All right, so I can move. Yes, I mean, you, you can do the whereas, and then now there could be involved, and just, you know, like we, we said before, and, you know, do the should that. Right, so this was. I, what's that, Don? Well, I'll, I'll do I do and, and do one A, B, and then two and three, you know, and just make sure that you say should as opposed to required or must. All right. So, John, you want to um, move on that? Yeah, I, I, I will move that. Uh, yeah, yeah, to have that resolution. All right, as we just talked about, Don Hoyt uh, seconds it. Is there any other discussion, explanations, anyone needs clarifications on the uh, motion? All in favor? Are we posting this on businesses? Are they posting? As you, on number three, and what we've talked about is doing one, two, and three, poster requirement. Each covered establishment must post signage at the entrance and at other appropriate locations stating that members of the public should wear face coverings when, uh, by the order of the uh, Moortown Select Board. Yeah. And so this following ordinance would guide them to the kind of a custom document that has something about 14 days and the yeah. people well, can to be overcome if they don't like it or have special hearing. Well, that's where if you look at, Callie, Callie, if you look at uh, the whereas number, the third one down, whereas Governor Scott issued addendum 14 to, ex to his executive order on May 15, 2020, which includes in paragraph three the following authorizations from municipalities. The legislative body of each municipality may enact more strict local requirements regarding mask use than those set forth herein. So that super that, that supersedes everything else. Well, I I think that's what we're doing. Well, I have one question actually to that one that I agree. The members of the public should wear face covering. Okay, wait, no, about the entrance is, uh, the sign is at the entrance of uh, appropriate. So now business will put this up and then we say should, but some business will be that done the thing you can't enter anyway. So uh, it might be just up to the person if they want to post this or not. Or will that mess up or the establishment of a hurry that sign? No, because in each case, no, Don, because each business. For the post requirement, it says your establishment must post signage. Okay? That members should wear face covers. So, I'm not saying you must wear face covers. Right, and, and Don, everyone, if you own a business, that's your. You can uh, have every, any requirement that you want. You don't need the state or the town. Um, so you can have, you can kick anyone out of your store for whatever you want. If they don't want people with face masks, that's their, their choice. I, I just, you know, I understand. I just didn't want it to all of a sudden be complicated for a, a store owner, not like a couple of stores, that now they've had a sign up saying, you know, must wear a mask to the store, and now all of a sudden we're saying you should wear, you know, does that person now, you know, does he end I don't know. No, I meant just that that business owner puts him in a spot. You know, I can't imagine it would. No, no, they're not. And if it is, they'll yeah. they'll let us know. And we can, if anyone, if any business owner really has a, a you know a hard time about it, they can yeah. come and they can come before us and they can make a, a an argument against it. Yeah, I yeah I would question that because it still seems good. 
All right, any other questions, Callie, anything else? Seeing no other questions, all in favor, vote aye. Aye. Well, I don't John? So did you say anything about what I have with Governor Scott and so on? Yeah, no, that, that, as I said, that, the whole whereas is included in it. It just... Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right, good. Yep. Yeah. But he must have his, he's going to have his head up here. They covered his narrow fly, so I hope. Right, exactly, exactly, yes. Yeah. All right, so John, what's your vote? Yeah, let's go for it. John, your vote, please. Oh, aye. Aye. All right. Done? Aye. Okay. All right, so that's five. Uh, the motion has passed unanimously, and I'll help you with the wording with that. Thank you, everyone. I think that will. Um, appease everyone. And, yeah. and You'll probably send out a final product yeah. before you actually post it, right? That's correct, yeah. yeah. We'll send something out tomorrow so everyone can take a look at it, uh, just to make sure that everyone was clear on what we were voting on. All right. Uh, so Cheryl Lynn is not going to um, talk about the tax rate tonight. Uh, the state has not uh, finished up with the, the school tax, so she's going to let us know uh, when she gets that, and that'll be any day. So once that, that happens, I'd like to do a virtual meeting um, within a couple of days of finding that out so we can set the tax rate, uh, because as you know, as soon as we set that, they can get the tax bills out and we can start getting in uh, much needed revenue. So expect um, an email in a text or, or something. It will be a fairly quick turnaround um, and you'll be provided with uh, kind of where we're sitting and, and how we're coming up with the tax rate. Uh, right now it looks like it'll be a little bit above last year's, um, but we're still working on things. Um, one thing I would recommend to everyone as you're uh, maybe thinking about the tax rate and going back and looking at uh, the town report is things are going to be pretty tight. Uh, as we knew going in, the sidewalk was going to be a little bit over um, as far as what the, uh, the first estimates were and what the grant was. So if there's anywhere that anyone can uh, recommend or see some savings or places that we should freeze on spending. Um, that's what we're, we will be talking about at that meeting as well. Because um, I, I think we really need to tighten our belts up. I went through, I've looked at the, the, uh, the budget. I, don't, I just don't see where we can, but more eyes on it. Uh, maybe there are programs or, or things that we can perhaps uh, put off. So be on the lookout for that, please. Uh, Don, he uh, did a good job. Thank you, Don, for, uh, for being at that meeting uh, on the bridge, bridge closure. Um, if there's any questions for Don, uh, now is a good time to uh, come up with them. Or, or Don, do you have any other um, suggestions? Well, I guess what I, uh, the only thing I did hear is that 
didn't seem that, uh, and I can't blame him, the contractor wasn't like, you know, jumping up and saying, oh yeah, I'm happy to put some signs up on Bowling Clown Road or anything, but um, I guess I think only coming out of that is, uh, like I said, they are going to look into maybe how they might work some of their signs out back on Route 2, where all their different sign places are. They're going to have four electronic doors out there in a couple of different locations. Um, and then uh, whether we going to have to wait till, like I said, uh, the sheriff who was there for the meeting said that they hired him for, they hired him for extra control on, on uh, what the Meadow Road and North Road, or whether we're going to do that with our grant as well. And, um, you know, I, I can understand why they don't want to really bring attention to the detour. You know, that does seem to make sense. I don't know, maybe we could just get a couple of those signs for some of the folks who live on there, you know, that say, drive as if your kids live here or something. Maybe we could just, you know, a lot of our grants and for a few signs like that just for the folks who, you know, along the road. And, just, and also make sure, I think we have to wait for the sign up, and that's, that's about it. Yeah, I spoke to Chris Hunt on that uh, a couple months ago. Um, also, I can revisit that with him if you'd like. Because mm -hmm. I think he seems somewhat receptive to it. Is Chris Hunt the guy who's the engineer of PM that I met with today? I didn't really. Oh, uh, 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 well, I, oh, oh, you well, no, he's not. He's sitting with AFC. Yeah, I don't know who is Charles Bates, maybe that's the name I wrote down. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, but one thing, Don. Okay. And uh, John, yeah, if you could go back to the state, because Don is, uh, the, the contractor's going to do the, the least amount as he can for obvious reasons for cost wise. Uh, where the state, the, but the state can ask them and, and require more. So, John, if you can reach out to Chris. Um, yeah, we'll do. And. I think the only other thing would be in this is to have the follow up with the. Dave, maybe the guy I met with, I have to, sorry, I can't read my notes by his name right now, but he's like the local PM for the state. Was it, um, was it Phil, though? Remind him about, remind him about, I don't think they really thought about putting a sign to really, I'll see you on Route 2 about how this really, with those tractor trailers from down to town, it's going to be a real problem to start turning around and all that, you know, so. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, John, even when you talk to him about John, when you talk to him about that signage, you know, even be very blunt on those signs, like you won't be able to turn around. The kind of stuff they use on the, um, the gap there in Stowe. It doesn't work that well there either, but um, yeah, so you can try that. Okay. I'll reach out um, to both the state police and the, uh, the sheriff's department and see what type of rates we can get. Um, I've been, I have to talk to the lieutenant once at the state police, it was about a month and a half ago, and he's a way till it gets closer. And I just asked him to do more patrols there. Um, you know, uh, rather than costing us you know, spending money with the, with the sheriffs, um, the state, that's their job, um, is to patrol these type of things. And they've got thin budgets and they've got their people spread out but you know we've requested that I will call again um, and see what happens there but um, and also I'll right. reach out to uh, the sheriff I think it's Sam whatever his name is or, uh, see what they would do for us as well I'm not completely I'm sure of this but I would think that the bridge contract has been a pay item in it for uniform traffic officers that the state engineer, I think it's Bill, Bill or Bill Richardson, I think his name is, can authorize CNONs to put a UTL out there through their contract without more talent being involved at all. I'm pretty sure there must be. Yeah, yeah, if you can, uh, John, did you hear that? Uh, no, I did not, not clearly. 
What I was saying, John, is I think the bridge contractor has a pay item for uniform traffic officers that the state can authorize, the state can authorize St. Ange to hire and put wherever they think is necessary. So uh, I believe that, that, I think that's the way we should go and Morgantown wouldn't be uh, stuck with any bill at all be through uh, the state and St. Ange. same engineer for the bridge job is is for the paving job and their trailer is is, is right over there on uh, Cameron Road. Right. And all I gotta do is pronounce it. They're they're pretty they're good to work. Yeah. So I think that's that's the way we should go. I think it's just a matter of going down and talking to them. And Find out if they can do that, and I, I'm pretty sure that they can. All right, thank you guys. Um, one other thing that uh, Cheryl Lynn wanted me to talk to you guys about is, is uh, the excavator loan, and we can either go ahead and take it out of. Um, town funds and, and pay that back or we can go ahead and take it there's a three and a five year rate that she has and Sasha do you have this rates or they you give yep, it to me they are in that book right there just take it out yeah so there's yeah the community bank and the um North, Northfield Savings Bank, and we can get a three year at 1.97 or a five year at 2.05 percent. Um, it was her recommendation that we go ahead with the five year uh, at 2.05 percent interest rather than borrow from the savings reserve. Um, and I think I, I like to have that liquidity, so it would be my recommendation that we go ahead and finance the excavator through um, conventional funds. I would second that motion. Any further discussion on the motion to um, finance the excavator through um, the community national, the, the community bank? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor vote aye. 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 Uh, Don Rexford? Okay, thank you. So I should get that. Yep, thank you. All right, so now um, any reports, communications? Any, uh, Sana, uh, Callie, is there anything else that you would like to share with us tonight? Um, I would just thinking about the fact that we have to Well, I think that's a question that we can. I agree. I, uh, I'm not sure if we, if we 
people wear gloves or not, but unfortunately, there are people who think they're doing a good thing by pulling it out and throwing it into the road. Uh, and uh, in reality, just like Japanese hotly, that's just spreading. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a good question for Martin. Um, as far as our timing, when we should be hitting this, and do we need to look at the potential down the road of, of, of a piece of equipment that can handle it, you know, as an unneeded, or unneeded basis? I don't know what you would, you would get, but all right. I think that's a good suggestion, Callie Sasha, so if you could make sure that's in the notes so Martin can um, look at that. Anything else, Callie? No. All right, John, what else you got? Well, let's see. I already mentioned the John Gallagher thing. Uh, uh, then when, when Neil was talking, I mentioned that he had called me today, too. No. At any rate, uh, he, he's going to come by, uh, I think, on Wednesday and share some things with me that I will I will bring back to the, to the board. But, I was, actually, I was surprised he didn't mention, you know, an important timeline that, you know, if we wanted to act on, um, you know, on this warrant from the district, um, I mean, October is when um, the school board is thinking of uh, voting on um, their timeline, which could include Taking more time five and six out. Um, so, yeah, he was thinking that um, if we did add anything, that we would want to have a vote in November. I just don't know that we can do that. I don't know if we have enough time. Well, I think we can, depending on what the what we think's happened. I think we can make anything happen. But let's take a look at what's what the uh, Harvard Board is, is looking to vote at. I mean, last time they, the recommendation I saw was they were looking at moving the, the, uh, the Harvard 7th, 8th down, and the only reason they would touch more town was if there was uh, dire financial straits. Um, right, that's, that's, what, that's what it appeared, and that's, yeah, that's certainly a question that needs to mention itself. And that, that's what I said to Neil, and, and he wasn't under the impression. So I'll just, I'll just let you know more when I uh, leave it up. Yeah, and so we'll have an agenda item next time about it to discuss. And we'll have Neil on. Um, so if everyone can, you know, bone up on their, their hardwood stuff so we can have some discussion around that. I thought I'd also mention you called me as well. And uh, I, was gonna, I would be talking to him too if it's to hear what he has to say and try to get a handle on it. But in the meantime, I've tried to spend a little time on uh, researching the whole thing about Act 46 and how it came about and the, you know where we were and how we've been in it for 20 years. And I've, I've, I've been getting some very interesting information about, um, about the whole process and about uh, you know why I mean, all of a sudden now we're wishing our kids to Harvard, you know, and then just having our elementary school and, and that impact and, and, the, and the amount of students, you know, versus, you know, it shows that larger classes are better. One classes of 20 are better than five and you're still paying teachers insurance and they're paying salaries and stuff. And that's why we should go talk consolidation. But anyway, um, it will be good to carry on the discussion at our next meeting, and I just wanted to let you know I'm trying to educate myself to all sides of the story here. And I think that's it's important to have a uh, good understanding and, and know what both sides are trying to accomplish. Um, and I think there's a lot of similarities on what people want to accomplish and just how they're all going about it um, is the problem or the difference. All right, um, John, uh, Ray, any, anything new with you? Anything to share? No, nothing. All right, um, and I think I've 
shared everything that I have um, as far as announcements. Sasha, what do, you, do you have anything for us? I have that letter that was submitted, a complaint about the listers, response to uh, Okay. Okay, Don. Uh, just a minute. Uh, let me just touch on what um, uh, Sasha had. Sasha had uh, passed a um, it was a complaint from um, Crystal Berwick uh, about the listers, about being a little bit more available, and um, so I will pass this on and. I've got some things I've been trying to work with Mike in. This is one more thing that we can uh, just discuss. It's really a matter of communications. Um, and we'll just make sure that that's happening on a timely basis. So, Don, what, what do you got? Well, just real quickly, uh, before, uh, I have two things, or three, but um, could John just give us a little uh, array, a little sidewalk update? How are we doing with that? Is the right time for that, or is that all? Well, that, that's, all, that's yeah. all business, but we can go ahead and go ahead. Um, yeah, that's a curve of a lot of I'm going to read your email from uh, Nick Monty. <clears throat> and, um... Who's Nick Monty? Oh, uh, he's just two boys, uh... Oh. Supervisor. So it says, uh, Dubois is finishing mainline granite curve installation to Hurdle Road, sidewalk following. We will set that and fill in and start radius at School Street. The sidewalk crew is filling in and pouring between school crosswalks headed south for a total road starting today. And this, this got to me three hours ago. For the individual driveway crossings, I've notified the four, four property owners and gave them notice. Those four are scheduled Wednesday and Thursday this week, weather pending. This is to leave the 90 foot stretch south of Howland Brown property closed as we are waiting on answers to this extra test case. Um, and Rick probably has some more word on that. The curving there was installed this past Sunday, uh, past Saturday. And, uh, you know, this, uh, I mean, the curving is, is might be the hurdle road today. Um, but at any rate, that's, that's pretty much what, you, you know, what I got from, uh, from Nick. Hey, John, have they gone back and um, fixed that first part that they poured the first week? Did I, they do what? I can update you. Okay. I, th I think our plan was, uh, Tom, that we were going to finish pouring our concrete down through, and then we're going to back up and fix the, okay. the ramp over here. Okay. Yeah, I just haven't been through it. Yeah. yeah. What, what we're going to do is we're going to lower the curve there and have the less reveal. They, they, you know, they got a plan. Okay. They have a plan. Uh, and just to update you, so there's still the issue, there's a couple issues. Um, there was no coordination between that we can see between Lamar and Dickinson and Vermont AOT between their project, our plans, and their plans. And so there was the yeah, Pike is in town, and they started shooting grades, and they were not happy with a lot of things, um, particularly the curb grades, and. We had, we had to make it pretty clear to them that we uh, notified them what, you know, we've been on the job site since June, basically, and we went through all the motions to try to get AOT and everybody out here to, everybody got on the same page so we wouldn't get to this situation, uh, and they, for some reason, never did, but whatever. Uh, I think the bottom line is there's there's been, you know, some back and forth between Lamarill Dickinson, TPI, Pike, us. We're trying to work out a lot of these grade differences without us having to go back and do extra work because of Lamarill Dickinson, you know, basically their grades. So I think the only, the only big issue right now, I think, is 
down uh, by uh, Eugene's place. There's around 60 feet of curb in which I've been told uh, the, there was a bust in the grades on the plans and it was corrected, but it's still not working. I'm gonna look at it tomorrow. I think that may be the only place where we may have to go back and redo 50 feet of curb. Uh, and, or not. Yes, they are. They're going to. They're going to. Pike is going to just. They didn't want to. Uh, the state didn't want to pay for the extra pavement, basically. And I, pretty much told them that the town expects a six-inch reveal through the town. You know, with a few variations. That we don't want to get this project all done and see curb reveal from three to eight inches. It would look terrible. Right. And they said, "Well, you're going to have to lower your curb." And I said, "We're not lowering the curb. You guys are going to have to." Add more payment, whatever. Where if the curbing is in, you've got to build to the curbing, and the curbing is to the grade that was established. And so I think we're I think we're there. I think that has passed. But there was a time where they thought they were not going to do that. I don't understand how they would do that, even with the catch basins there, because it's all it's engineered it, together. I mean, it is. So how would you? You'd have to go back and move catch basins if you wanted to. Yeah. At least adjust the elevation. Yeah. So, yeah. And so I, I think the I, th I think it's all going to work out, but it's, it's been sort of a battle. Uh, uh, and we still have the issue about the additional catch basin that uh, right away issues that needs to be signed before we can go forward with it, even though it's it, it's such a minimal piece of work. We have, it's, it seems like it's cost more for lawyers' fees just to get the paperwork than to actually to do the work, unfortunately. Well, the, you know, the problem with that way is that Pat Travers just pulled this boilerplate agreement. Um, it basically turned up, basically, we, 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 the property owner turned over all his rights on that piece, piece of property mm -hmm. um, to the extent that it, 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 it almost read that. Uh, he was, you know, he was going to be reimbursed for that piece of property. And, um, you know, Cheryl and I took a look at that and decided that that just didn't work. And rather than him going to his own lawyer, and uh, we, we felt that it would make, it, it just made sense to have Ron take a look at it. And, um, and Howland's willing to agree with, you know, to work with Ron on it. So, um, I mean, from, from day one, you know, both Pat and I knew how difficult Holland could be. Um, and, I mean, he has the right to be. It's his property. Yeah. And we are going outside, of, uh, outside well outside of the right way onto his property. So, and, and then I might also point out that, you know, um, luckily, Alan D is uh, only going to charge us $1,110 for um, the survey that has to be done on that piece and so on. And they have, have, are not going to be charging us on any of the other corrections that, you know, you know, for the time Doug has to come out and so on and make other corrections. So I'm kind of pleased with that. Okay. If the other thing, if one of you guys can touch on uh, as far as the project, um, the gas tanks, and I know there was a, a change order on that. One of you guys, John, maybe try to talk about that. Well, the first thing that I did, the one thing that I did is uh, Chris Hunt uh, sent over the, uh, the signed copy, uh, um, you know, with, with, you know, an explanation of, um, of the expenses. And the last, the last, Sentence uh, he has down rather than fifteen thousand one hundred and let's see one hundred and thirty he has fifteen thousand and it was an extra three on the end so if you move the cost so I did I did send that back to him and said that we need to have that change but um, uh, that Cheryl is really confident Cheryl she did so good in my absence. You know, she took care of that, and, um, you know, she, she said that basically that it was going to be working with the state, it's going to be between the state and SB Collins, we're not going to have to get involved in it. All right. And SB Collins is going to have to pay us. All right, 
I just wanted to make everyone aware because that's a, that was a I think a fifteen thousand dollar change order. Um, but, right. Uh, eventually, that's going to be pushed. Forward. And I can't I can't see how the Collins could not pay it. It's their property. Yeah. I, well, we yeah, haven't. The property would get a thing under there. Right, and we haven't they haven't said no yet, but um, at least that's my right. understanding. Exactly. So uh, until they do, we'll. Consider them good neighbors. Um, but they'll be getting a bill for that. Um, anything else on that project, guys? I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right, Don. What else did you have? Well, so um, along the lines of that project, and I'm just going to throw this out there, you guys. I know you all think I'm snap, but it wouldn't be the first time. I'm just wondering um, if we could all consider the, the people who live in the village, you know, from one end to the other, are certainly being impacted by all this work and time. And I'm just wondering when it, they're being great, helpful, and, and, and we all know what it's like, it's battle conditions, it's not the dirt and all that. So I was just wondering, maybe at the end of the project, I don't know if there'd be any funds in the project, that we could maybe get everybody in town on Flowers or something. You know, we have two, we have farmhouse flowers on 100 B, and we have doing going trap with those flowers, which is in both businesses are way off from the C19. They don't have weddings to supply and all that. And so maybe they'd give the town a good deal. And it would be a nice gesture to all those folks who are currently living through some trying times in the summer. The dust and the noise. Anyway, something to think about. Yeah. The next item was, are we going to try to have Zoom meetings? Is that still being thought about, or we're not going to do that? I, I, I believe so. Uh, Tom, I believe, is going to address that. Yeah, so we, originally when we started the, the teleconferences, that was the, uh, where I was, was headed. Um, and then it was pointed out with some security issues and stuff that this might be a better idea as far as the, uh, the teleconferences. Um, I think going forward, I'm all for, I do, you know, one or two Zoom conferences a day myself, so it's something, uh, a medium I'm comfortable with. Um, it sounds like everyone else would be willing to, to take that on as well. It's, 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 um, it's very easy to just download an app. Um, so we can, we can certainly do that. Uh, Ray, I know you... You like meeting as a group here. I, I don't mind being here. Um, so I think we can do a little bit uh, of, of, of hybrid, if you will. Uh, and if you come in and do that, we could each if, uh, have a, a computer or phone in here so that everyone can, can hear and see each other uh, fairly clearly. Um, or Ray, we can just do it from home. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, uh... I, I would like to see at least one, try to have one group meeting and, and maybe one Zoom meeting. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't mind trying a Zoom meeting. I just think that even this, even this short group we have tonight, I think is, to me, I get a lot more out of the meeting, can really focus on the town work uh, when we're all in a group versus over at a conference, from my, from my standpoint. So. Uh, but I'm willing to, to work with, you know, we'll try the next Zoom and then uh, you know, do it we'll here, see how that goes. Where, wherever, wherever, you know, whatever you want to do down. Yeah. Or three, we'll do whatever you want to do. All right, we'll, we'll plan on it, uh, Zoom and whether it, it's 100% of us from, from home or whether it's a hybrid, but next, next meeting we'll have that available for all. Is that good? Uh, So can I do work? Am I allowed a couple of, to bring up a couple of other things? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. We got some time. Uh, can I address uh, the thing about doing something for villagers? Yeah, go ahead, John. Yeah. Oh, sure. One of one of the other items that uh, has been mentioned to me is that people on the other side of the street. You know that sidewalk or whatever it was was bad enough before, but it's really bad now. Oh, it's going to be really bad. And I hope that we can address that somehow because, you know, we're looking at another two years if we even do it. Um, so, you know, anything would help. Right. 
much is that? How much, how much of that? How much of that is left right now? It, it's hard to say, you know, because it's there's they're going to go through a mill, I think, starting tomorrow. I think if you're going to do something on this side, that Pike could do something pretty easily. You know, even if it's a little patch here or there, or whatever. I think that's where you have to, to deal with Pike on that. Uh, uh, and if you may, you know, I don't know how the whole, how the whole thing works, but you know, they have Pike through their state engineer. It seems like something could be done over there pretty cheap at this point. Hey, hey guys, what about, would you guys agree if, um, if Ray is willing to, if we asked him to, to, to reach out to the AOT, AOT and the yeah. Pike engineer, and, and maybe that can be all milled out or, or the rest of the concrete taken up, and then just the uh, asphalt put down and we so, can paint, paint it or whatever. So it's uh, designated a bike lane or a uh, yeah. walking lane. It's definitely going to have to get Ray, when do you think it's, it's going to require some serious grading here about stall, you know? Well, it was, you know, I don't, I don't think you're going to get a complete reconstruction, but I think you will be able to get from AOT some paving put in there, so it'll somewhat match the new pavement, and they say have a strike in there, a fog line in there, uh, where it's better than it was. Uh, you're, you're not going to get a complete reconstruction, although, yeah, I don't know. Well, that'll be fine. We can send them out, see what it is, and then even if we have to maybe spend a little money to, because it is, it's, it's horrible, and it's, um, you know, it might be able for a few thousand dollars to have it taken care of. And, uh, because like you said, John, it's going to be in several years before uh, uh, sidewalks. So, and, and yeah, I, I think at the end of the week. Say again? I think it'll be. No, I, what were you saying, Tom? I was going to say, I think it'll be more than a few thousand dollars. You know, but we, can, we should certainly look into the time, right? Yeah, well, uh, remember, I mean, it certainly costs more than that to reconstruct them, but there's some work already being figured in. So, you know, if we can get them to throw some in, we can do some, and let's just see what we can't do with them. Um, and, and at the end of the project, I agree with, with both of you gentlemen. Um, Everyone in town has been really good. I haven't had really any complaints. Uh, we've had some homeowners, uh, the, the people right next to the fire station, who have been more than exemplary. You know, they, help, they let us take out their bushes uh, and such. So um, we have some thanks there. So yeah, I think there's something we could do, um, and we'll we'll plan on doing something at the end. Um, so, yeah. Anything else, Don? Yeah. Um, yeah. What well, um, the town hall committee? Is that just a good moment to quickly talk about that? You bring it up, sure. Um, I'll just say that we did get one response or a couple of responses back um, from committees, and there being no interest so far. Um, has anyone else heard any different, or did you? Well, this well, we got Denise Cavalry interested, she responded. And then we have two folks, uh, sort of a rotating, from what I understand, from the library trustees, there'll be two folks from there. And um, I've talked to uh, Johnny Summers, who is thinking about it as a citizen in town. And I've also talked to Paul and Wood and Karen Horn, who said they would help. They're not so sure how much time they could spend, but they would be willing to do some talking and brainstorming. So, I mean, it might be something just to start off with a small group and then see how we could get it to be a bigger committee or what we could organize to have the forums or in the future to get people together to talk about it. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, as long as I wasn't aware of, I uh, had quite so many responses back, I just, because I was looking at the people who said no, 
Um, so yeah, we can get something if that's, um, why don't between now and next meeting, you and I talk about it and figure out what type of meeting you want to have and then uh, at our next meeting we can, be great. That'd be good. We can do that. Um, okay. The other and, thing, uh, go ahead. And then um, I did the Manhattan Valley Ambulance Service. I forwarded something on to Scott to today. I'm not sure if he's forwarded on to everybody. But um, I talked to uh, uh, Mark Giometti, uh, who sort of is like the lead, that he's a volunteer and does a lot of the, figure out a lot of financing stuff. But the long and short of it is he has a really good PowerPoint. And this is something that we can work on and actually have either in our budget or got the town meeting and voting on it. I mean, it's a 2021 kind of activity that we can get, you know, to work on or approved or take some action. So just wanted to give you that. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, and, um, I saw that. Well, Thank you. Yeah, that was in your thing. Yeah. And he's happy to come uh, uh, to a meeting or, you know, and help, you know, talk to us some more, answer any questions we have, et cetera, et cetera. My my only my only uh, negative thought I guess is the fact that they were asking the same from us as they are Chase and, and Wakefield when we're paying for ambulance service, you know, elsewhere. And right. it was uh, a run. Yeah, yeah John. We could talk, talk we could I'm sure we could talk to them about that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think when I think of the look at how should be hit up for more because I mean fifteen thousand for each town, that's not much. You know? Not really. Those guys, I mean what we pay pay to Montpelier and, and, and Waterbury, I mean, you know, you you think that uh, they would want to ask for more, but you know. Well they have you know, so many volunteers. It's just a volunteer organization where the other places are paying staff. Right. You know. So that's why our, our cost is different. Yeah. But maybe we can look at that, John, and, and kind of like we do with the other ambulance stuff, is, is look at it per capita. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or something yeah. like that. And uh, last, last but not least, it's a long couple many meetings ago, we, uh, Margaret brought to us about some concerns about people parking, swimming, and then you know, the, that whole access and to the swim hole back there in the sand pile. And I said, well, maybe if I could find someone who's willing to donate their design time, we could just take a look at what could be possible. So I've actually found someone who would be to do that. So I'm wondering uh, how we could, you know, Bob and or Ray and I, this designer and, and uh, Martin, could Eat, do a quick walk around or you know, football or sometimes or just something to think about. Throw it out there. I'm, I'm game for a reunion with Alfred. Yeah, I think that would be good. I think mean, those are the people to get involved. Make sure Martin, find out when's good for your, your architect friend. Who is it, by the way? Do you want to share that? Uh, it's uh, I'm embarrassed to say I can't remember his last name, but it's Craig who lives in on the other side of, up on Freeman, uh, yeah, Freeman Hill. Oh, Ash. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll... Uh, but he does. We can set up a time if you want to work with him to set up some times and give us, uh, you know, a few different um, choices, you know, early morning. We'd, we'd be happy to do that. Yeah. Okay, so send that to everybody on the board. Yeah, the board and so in Mark. You and Ray. Yeah, the, the whole board. Actually, you want me and Ray, and me and Ray can report back. Um, it'd be fine. John's got enough on his shoulders. Callie, I did. we'll hear from our husband. Yeah, just send it to Ray and I. Yeah, welcome. Okay, Ray and you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ray and me. I wasn't going to correct you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, you. 
me, that's right. So it's a me, so it's ready to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other uh, new business or old business anyone wants to check? Well, before, before we do new business, and I know you can't shoot me because I'm on the phone, but. Um, I can hear you though, John. I just want to go back in there. Um, one of the things, and, and um, you know, my community meetings and all this, and when we're writing policy, is to be careful on the usage of words and not to make things sound mandatory. And I've tried to have a lot of different words. That's why I came up with should. But just listen to this, okay? I mean, you've got things like must versus should, will versus shall. I think shall is a little bit stronger than should, but it's not a will or a must. Do we think we could amend that to use the word shall instead of should? Uh, well, I don't know. We've, that that uh, we've kind of that motion is made and voted on, and at this point, guys, I think why don't we just and John, I appreciate the um, the play on words, but should we we'll give it? I think that's that's all we need to do, and I can see, um, you know. So if you don't mind, and I'd rather not open that up at our next meeting. If you want to bring it out again, we can do that. But at this point, I think I'd let it go live. Okay. And, let, and, let, and again, that's, that's me speaking. Um, if there's any other strong uh, will to, to go back and revisit that, I'm, I'm willing to. But at this point, I think we've spent quite a bit of time on it and, and we'll be getting our point across. Okay. You set John with that? You all right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You're right. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, if there's any other old business, about any, any new business. All right, well, that being the case, I uh, move to adjourn. Yeah, okay. did we do the minutes? No. No, we have not, so thank you, Ray. So Ray, do you want to uh, I would like to recommend or make motion for the minutes of what the name? Uh, July 6th. July 6th. 2020. 2020. John, uh, who seconds? Any uh, concerns, questions, thoughts? All in favor, vote aye. 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 John. All right. Aye. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you very much. So again, um, no other new business or old business. Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Ray, would you second? Yeah. All right. Cali seconds. All in favor, vote aye. All right. Aye. 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 Good night, everyone.